Hello, good morning, uh, Facebook, uh, Upper County Missionary Baptist Church, family, friends. We thank you once again for tuning in to Upper County Missionary Baptist Church uh, sermon on today. Uh, we just thank God for this day. It's a day in which the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, so we look forward to what God has in store for us on today. Uh, we just uh, just so so thankful once uh, once again to be part of this uh, of this brand new day. Uh, we're going to have prayer, and after prayer, we're going to go right into our word, into the message on today, um, and so God can um, can bless us real good. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, we do come before your mighty presence on this morning, first of all, to say thank you. We thank you for all that you have done, that you're doing, and that you're going to do. We ask God that you continue, God, to just bless us, God, as you already have. We ask God that you continue just to provide safety, God, for us throughout this day, and, and we just want to just give you all praise and all glory. Now, God, we just want to get out of the way, so allow your Holy Spirit to have his way in this place and in each and every one of us. God, we ask that you may use me, God, as you see fit. We thank you, God, and we love you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you once again. We're going to go into the book of Matthew, chapter number 16, uh, verses 24 through 26. Uh, this is a passage of scripture in which you may be quite familiar with, uh, I would like to entitle this particular uh, passage of scripture for today, We All Have a Cross to Bear. Uh, we all have a cross to bear, and that is so true, uh, especially according to what the Bible says, these passage of scriptures in which we're going we're gonna to go through on, on, this, after, on this morning. Uh, so we all have a cross to bear. Uh, when you think about a cross, we think about sometimes a cross that we wear, uh, a cross in which... Uh, you may see uh, somewhere uh, the, a picture or anything like that, but when it comes down to the cross, when a believer sees a cross, a believer sees the cross of Christ, all that he has done for, uh, for him, for the individual, uh, what Christ has done. Because uh, when we look at a cross, we don't look at the cross as being so, uh, so kind. Uh, we don't look at the cross as being so pretty and, and, and uh, uh, so... Uh, I don't know, something in which you which you just want to just present all the time is something that has to be uh, thought about uh, because of the work of the cross. You know, the, the cross was actually a work, uh, not so much of putting it together or anything, but because of what Jesus did. Jesus died on the cross and it was the cross itself that uh, was made somewhat of a mockery of people. Uh, uh, it was a form of a penalty, of course, uh, and some punishment. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. So when we look at a cross, it's not just a mere uh, little thing just like that and just a, almost like a tear or something, but it means something to the, to the average believer, to the believer. All the work that, that Christ did for us was done on a cross. And we're so thankful for the cross. So so when it comes down to passages like this, that we all have a cross to bear and, and it's not the kind of cross that, that Jesus bore for us. But it's kind of cross in which we, we have to bear because we have to think about what he has done for us. Because when we think about the cross and the work, once again, we think about all that he has done for you, for me. It was, it was him because of what he did. We were able to go to sleep last night and not worry about Danger, not worry about uh, a lot of things, not worry about uh, what is to become of, of tomorrow or, or, or what's going on, what's going to happen. It's because of the cross, because of Jesus Christ, we have peace. When we go to sleep, we, we have peace because of Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. So we thank God for uh, Jesus Christ and all that, that he has done. So here in Matthew chapter number 16, verses 24 uh, through 26, we see here that Jesus had just got through talking to the disciples. If you can recall how, how even when, when uh, the, the disciples, uh, let's, let's, I'm, I'm just going to go back just a, just a tad so we can see what led up to the, to the various passages we're going to look at today. In verse number, let's go back to verse number uh Verse number 13, verse number 13 of Matthew chapter number 16. It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, uh, saying, whom do men say that I, 
the son of man am. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah and others Jeremiah uh, or one of the prophets. 15 says, he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You see, this, these are people who are disciples who've been with Jesus, who've been walking with him, who've been talking with him, who've been, who've been uh, um, uh, uh, lounging with him, uh, eating with him and all the different things with him and listening to his teachings, been around when, when he did the miracles. And then verse number 17 says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And look at 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, or this stone, and, and, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the gates of hell shall not, shall not, period, shall not prevail against it. So Satan can do all that he, that he want, all that he can. He can, he can uh, uh, do so much. Uh, even governments can probably shut down churches because of pandemics, because of like that. But the church ain't closed. The, 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 the gates of hell, nothing shall prevail against the church. The church is still going. Why? Because the church is you. The church is me. That's why. So, so don't be so concerned about why church doors aren't open or, or the churches are open. As long as we are open for the Lord to work in us. We are his temple. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Lord, the temple, the, the temple of the spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit lives in us, resides in us. He speaks to us. He talks to us. He tells us we are his own. So, yes, talking about a church, this is a building mind that that I'm in. It's called the church, but it's really not a church until the people come in. Right now, it's a building. So, yes, the church is where you are. So he says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19 says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You see, what are the keys? What do you mean? The keys that we have, the, look, we have the word of God, which is his authority and his authority here on earth. Opens up doors in heaven. My God. Look at this. And he goes on and says in verse, um, it says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus, the Christ, the anointed the Messiah, the Son of God. And he says in 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. He told them, he began to share with them that it's going to happen. That he's going to be killed. He's going to be persecuted. But he's going to rise the third day. Hallelujah. Can't somebody say the third day. It was the third day and the first day of the week. Uh, that our Lord and Savior got up from the grave. He goes on and says in verse number, in verse number 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Peter, 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 rebuking the Lord. Peter didn't take it kindly that the Savior would go out like that. So he rebuked Jesus. We call that kind of flying off the hook when you don't know the whole story. Look at right here in verse number 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, talking about Jesus now, and said unto Peter, look at this right here, 
Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Well, Jesus told Peter or, or the one behind Peter's notion, get thee behind me, Satan. How many of you know uh, that you got to call him out when he needs to be called out? Don't pull no punches with him. Why? Because the devil, Satan, he ain't going to pull no punches with you. Call him out by name. And that's what we got to do. But when we call it out, amen, when we call him out, don't pull no punches. They know why. Because when you swing, ha, make sure, amen, it connects. Because that devil ain't playing around. And we can't be playing around, amen, with the devil. Amen. Jesus said, thou art an offense unto me. For you are not mindful of the things that be of God, but those that be of men. That's what he told Peter. Why? Because the devil tried to take his mind and change it and begin to speak against what Jesus said. But Jesus said, it ain't time for that. We, we don't have time for that, Peter. We got business to attend to. Get your mind made up. We got to make up our mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, amen, here. Here in verse 24, it's what we pick up in our text. Amen. Here we go. He says, then Jesus said unto his disciples. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, will come. Now y'all check that. If any man will come after me, we're talking about bearing, bearing a cross. He said, if any man will come after me, he says that not before, not alongside, but after me. You hear me, hear me, hear me. Whether you're talking about time frame, it's going to be after anyways. When you're talking about presence, <laughs> amen, it's going to be after. Why? Because Jesus talking in this big picture, he's saying, amen, later on, we're going to take a look and see that look. Where Jesus has gone, what he has done, we are to follow. But here he goes on. He says in verse number 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Number one, let him deny Himself. It's right there in the text. Right there in the text. We, we've gone over this before and, and, and different ones have read this before. And, and every time we look at it, man, God brings you, brings a new perspective. Uh, we begin to look at it just a tad differently. Amen. It may have been because, amen, amen, we have walked a little bit longer. Amen. A little bit further. We have walked, amen, some places and everything. And now, amen, we begin to look at this and, and we begin to open up just a little bit, a little bit more. He goes on and says to let him deny himself. Look what Jesus, amen, said in Matthew uh, 16, 23, the verse before. He says, for you are not mindful of the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You see, if we're going to deny ourselves, our mind has got to be changed. We, we've got to have a changed mind. Peter said right there, Jesus told him in 23, he said, you ain't thinking right, you ain't thinking right. A lot of us ain't thinking right. You see, we, we're not denying ourselves. We're not, you see, in order for us to not to deny ourselves, we have to, we have to uh, not put ourselves first. Follow? Not put ourselves first. Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You catch that? Be not conformed, shaped to this world. Don't, don't, don't be conformed to this world. There's a lot of stuff going on in this world. We see that every day. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, that ye may prove what is that is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Stop letting Hollywood and social media tell you who you are 
and how you are to think. Just know that Hollywood is about money and social media is about influence. We got to be careful. If we're going to look at TV, understand what's happening with TV. Don't get caught up in it. If we're going to use the social media, understand what social media is about. You see, so therefore, don't get caught up in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch many videos on social media, and, and these are the ones that really get me kind of fired up a little bit, you see. But 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 uh but there's other other videos and stuff out there too, but but I ain't too much mindful of those things. But those things or social issues that's happening in our world today, it gets your get your blood to boiling. You see? And so in Philippians 2, 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We must learn the mind of Christ. That can only be done through prayer, fasting, and studying the word of God. We got to know the mind of Christ. We got to we gotta learn the mind of Christ. If, if he told us in his word, it says, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We, we, we got to learn the, the mind of Christ. How are we going to learn the mind of Christ? We got to learn about Jesus. If we got to learn about Jesus, we're talking about studying about Jesus. We're talking about being students or learners about Jesus. We're talking about being disciples of Jesus. If we're going to learn about somebody, that means we're going to follow, amen, amen, where they have gone. We're going to look at their makeup. We're going to see what they're about. We're going to listen to what they said. Uh, see, we're going to see about them. Uh, if, if we're going to, if we're going to learn about them. You see, a lot of people learn about you too. They, they kind of know your mind. Why? Because they've been watching you. You see, they've been, they've been looking. Even when you ain't looking, somebody else looking at you. You don't think nobody looking at you. Somebody looking at you. Somebody's watching. You see, they're, they're learning us. But as they watch us, let them see the Christ in us. Let them see it. Hallelujah. That we are denying ourselves. But not only should we let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. The battle, this battle of the mind is not a small undertaking. Paul says the best in Romans 7. In Romans chapter number 7, starting at verse 13, Paul, Paul says this right here. Was then that which is, he says, uh, this, this is the struggle of the two natures. I have it in my Bible. Was then that which is good made death unto me, says God forbid, but sin, he goes on, that it might appear sin working death. Uh, he says, in me by that which is, which is good, he says. Uh, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. So he began to talk about, about this law uh, of, of the flesh and, and the law of Christ. He goes on to say in verse 14, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, I that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that uh, is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And verse 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. You see that? We got issues with this, with the flesh. And that's what we have to deal with. And we deal with the flesh by the mind. You see what I'm saying? So, so therefore, we can tell our bodies what to do and what not to do. It's a, it's a battlefield of the mind. So yes, it's no small undertaking. There's some work to do. It's a battle to fight. Saints of God, this battle we have with ourselves is a daily battle. The question we all have is who will win? But you know, when we begin to think about that on a daily scale, so when we wake up in the morning, we got to thank God because we want to get our minds right. You know how it is when we when we give our testimony. I thank God for waking me up this morning, starting my own way, on my way. Thank you for my health, my strength, and my activity of my limb. Thank you for the right mind and everything else. You see how it goes? But yes, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And I thank God, amen, for, amen, saving me. So yes, think about the goodness of Jesus, what he's done for you. Yes, is number one, let him deny himself. The choice is ours. Let, L-E-T, the choice is ours. Look at number two. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Look at this other one. Take up his, his cross. Take up means to lift up. It implies lifting of the cross on high, just as Jesus did, so that all may see it. Crucify yourself. Not literally because Jesus Christ, because Christ has already taken up the cross for all of us. And Jesus said in John 12, 32, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. We are not to be ashamed of the cross. After all, it was the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, amen, rolled away. It was there. By faith, I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Amen. What can make you happy? Amen. The cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. All that he has done, amen, for you. And so, hold up our cross up high, meaning we are willing to suffer with him. The word of God says in 2 Timothy 2 and 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, the Bible says that he also will deny us. In 2 Timothy 3.12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly, he says, in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In Hebrews 11.25, when talking about the faith of Moses, choosing rather to suffer, the, to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Saints of God, it's still a choice. It's all on us. First, we have to deny ourselves. After we deny, I know that's a hard thing to do. We got to change our mindset. And then the Bible lets us know, take up your cross. Following Jesus is easy when life runs smoothly. Our true commitment to him is revealed during trials when we go through some things. But you know what? Jesus said those trials are going to happen. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Jesus says, I have overcome the world. And discipleship means sacrifice. That's what it is, sacrifice. So we all have a cross to bear. Yes, saints, we all have to take up our cross. So lastly, he says right here in verse 24, then said Jesus unto the, to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up and take up his cross. And then it says, and follow me. 
Remember, the Bible says not in front of, not beside, but we have a command. If we are to be a true disciple, we are to follow him. Jesus even told Satan to get behind him. Even a trained dog knows to follow his master and not lead. Isn't that right? Yeah, I know someone's got those dogs out there just pulling us. But a trained dog, a dog that knows who his master is, he will follow, he will follow him. If we are to, to be who he has called us to be, we are to follow. If we take a look at, amen, 1 Peter 2 and 21, the Bible says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Here we go. Leaving us an example. And here we go. That ye should follow his steps. Meaning, you know, years ago, there was this book that we studied here at the church and in Bible study, and, and it was called In His Steps. So in his steps talked about how we are to every everything or decision that we make and whatever it is that we think about what what would Jesus do? WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Following in his steps. You see that that means that we have taken ourselves and we have put ourselves in a back burner and we put Jesus first and we keep him first. And then the decision and choices that we make. What would Jesus do? Jesus, guide me, lead me, show me, direct me. And he, Jesus will speak. Jesus will respond. Jesus will answer. We call him upon him. And then Jesus, amen, will answer our prayer. He says, uh, some of us go through more than others. But that does not mean that he has left or abandoned us. A lot of us have gone through a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of us have really, uh, my God, really gone through, gone through the ringer. But Jesus still there. Never left us. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 5, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I thought money had anything to do with it. <laughs> I was the NIV version. I like said, what? <laughs> but yes, he says, he says, let it. He said, he said, never leave you nor forsake you. Why? Because we get our mind right. Then we would know in our minds. He's right there. Jesus is right there. I ain't got to worry about, worry about nothing. Or I don't have to worry about anything because Jesus is right there. So these three points along with verse number 25 and 26. 25 says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Why do we bring that up behind this? Because it links to this. If we don't deny ourselves, it's all about us. I don't want to lose my life for Christ. I don't want to do that. Then Christ said, hey, look, whosoever will save his life will lose it, shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. When you have sold out for Christ, when you know that, hey, look, where your end is, you know where your life is. It's in Christ. You don't have to worry about anything. You sold out for him. Yeah, man, you're following him. You've denied yourself. You've taken up your cross. You're following in his steps. Amen. So therefore, why? He says in verse number 26, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Jesus died for us. Jesus became a man. He, he was crucified for us. John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world. 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 
Doesn't matter who you are. Who? White, black, it doesn't matter. God loves you. God loves you. Because Jesus died for you. He sent his son so he can die for us. To rescue us. To redeem us. Without the shedding of blood, no remission of sin. Jesus died for us. So, once we think about that and once we see all that he did for us, I can be his disciple. If I do all those things and, and not worry about my life because my life is sold out on him, not worry about my soul because it's sold out in Jesus, then we become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. So what does it take? It takes bearing your cross. So we all have a cross to bear. Why, why choose the cross? And that, because in the middle is the cross. That's what it takes. You're not ashamed, lift it up. You're following Jesus. I don't care who sees me. Why? Because I have denied myself. Why am I lifting it up? Because I'm following Jesus. This is what this is all about. The cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God, amen, for his word. His word is true. Now, if somebody's not saved, you need Jesus Christ today. Uh, you got to acknowledge your, you are a sinner. Repent of your sins. Know that Jesus died for you, that he is the son of God. He's going to come back one day. Be ready for him. The only way you're going to be ready for him is to accept Jesus Christ as your savior, as your Lord and savior, as your master. And then we begin to learn about him. Once we learn, we deny ourselves. We take up our cross and we follow him. It takes a lot to do that. You can't be weak and follow Jesus. You got to be strong. And the only way we're going to have that strength is through his spirit. Why? Jesus said, hey, the Bible said, not going to leave us alone. He sent us a comforter, another comforter, a comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that comforter comes in because you have invited him in and he will be with you. He will strengthen you. He will give you what you need when you need it, when you ask. Let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you for this opportunity to, to share your gospel. Thank you for your word, oh God. We all have a cross to bear. Nobody's uh, special. We all have to go through. Your word lets us know that Jesus did it. We got to go through also whatever it may be, but we're not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed of the cross because of Jesus Christ. So God, we ask that you may touch us, God, bless us, God, heal us, God, restore us, God. God, we thank you, God, for your word. For those that are not saved, we ask God that you may bless them, touch their souls and touch their hearts and touch their minds that they may accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. For those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior just now, God, we ask to continue, God, to infuse them with your Holy Spirit, that they may be stronger in you to follow Jesus Christ, to get into your word and your word get into them, that they may be able to walk and not just talk it. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray for those who are sick, pray for those who are shut in, Pray for those who have lost loved ones. We ask God to continue just to keep those that are in the airwaves. God, those that are on the highways, byways, keep them safe, oh God. God, let their mind be stayed on you. God, we thank you. We bless your name. Keep us ever, even as we go through this coronavirus. It's not done with us yet. We know that, God. That means, God, we got to continue to be diligent in all that we told us to wash our hands and wearing a mask. Help us, oh God, that people may, may do what they should do during this time to be a help to somebody else and not a hindrance or a stumbling block. 
God, we thank you. We love you. We do give you all praise and all glory. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Take care and be safe. Amen. God bless you. Until next time.